Today's unfortunate story is about Hamilton Howard, Albert Fish. He was an American serial killer, rapist, child molester, and cannibal who committed at least three child murders from July 1924 to June 1928. He was also known as the Gray Man, the Werewolf of Wisteria, the Brooklyn Vampire, the Moon Maniac, and the Boogeyman. Albert Fish was born Hamilton Howard Fish in Washington, D.C. on May 19, 1870. His father was an American of English ancestry and his mother was a Scottish-Irish American. Fish was the youngest child and had three living siblings, Walter, Annie, and Edwin. He wished to be known as Albert after a dead sibling and to escape the nickname Ham and Eggs that he was given at an orphanage in which he spent much of his childhood. Fish's family had a history of mental illness. His uncle had mania. One of his brothers were confined in a state mental hospital. A paternal half-brother suffered from schizophrenia and his sister Annie was diagnosed with a mental affliction. Three other relatives were diagnosed with mental illnesses and his mother had oral or visual hallucinations. Fish's father, a fertilizer manufacturer and former riverboat captain, suffered a fatal heart attack at the Baltimore and Columbic Railroad Station on October 16, 1875. Fish's mother put her son into St. John's Orphanage in Washington, where he was frequently physically abused. Fish began to enjoy the physical pain that the beatings brought. He enjoyed being beat. By 1880, Fish's mother secured a government job and was able to remove Fish from the orphanage. In 1882, at age 12, he began a friendship with a telegraph boy. The youth introduced Mr. Fish to such practices as drinking urine and eating feces. Fish began visiting public baths where he could watch other boys undress, spending a great portion of his weekends on their visits. And throughout his life, he would write obscene letters to women whose names he acquainted with from the classified sections. By 1890, at age 20, Fish moved to New York City. There he engaged in male prostitution and began molesting and raping boys, mostly less than six years old. In 1898, Fish's mother arranged a marriage for him with Anna Mary Hoffman, who was nine years his junior, and they had six children, Albert, Annie, Gertrude, Eugene, John, and Henry Fish. In 1903, Mr. Fish was arrested for grand larceny, convicted and incarcerated in Sing Sing. And in this time, Mr. Fish later recounted an incident in which a male lover took him to a wax museum where he was fascinated by the bisection of the human penis and subsequently became obsessed with sexual mutilation. Several years later, around 1910, Fish was working in Wilmington, Delaware, where he met a 19-year-old man named Thomas Benning. He took Betting to where he was staying, and the two began a sadomasochistic relationship. It's never been clear whether or not Mr. Fitz forced him into this, but his confession implied that Betting was intellectually disabled. 
after about 10 days, Mr. Fitch took Mr. Bedding to an old farmhouse where he tortured him over a period of two weeks. Fish eventually tied Bedding up, cut off half of his penis. I should never forget his scream or the look he gave me as Mr. Fish recalled telling his story. He originally intended to kill Mr. Bedding, cut up his body, and take it home. But he feared the hot weather would draw attention to him. Instead, fish poured peroxide over the wound, wrapped it in Vaseline, covered in a handkerchief, left a $10 bill, kissed Bedding goodbye, and left. Took the first train he could get back home and never heard what happened of Mr. Bedding. Or try to find out. At least that's what Mr. Fish said. Around the year 1917, Fish's wife left him, and it's around this time that he began to indulge in self harm by embedding needles into his groin and abdomen. After his arrest, x rays revealed that Fish had at least. 29 needles lodged into his pelvic region. He also began to hit himself repeatedly with a nail studded paddle and inserted wood doused with lighter fluid into his anus and set it on fire. While Fish was never thought to have physically attacked or abused his children, he did encourage them and their friends to paddle their butts with the same nail studded paddle he used to paddle himself with. Around the same year of 1919, Mr. Fish stabbed an intellectually disabled boy in Georgetown. He chose people who were either mentally disabled or African American as his victims, later explaining that he assumed these people would not be missed when they were killed. Mr. Fish would later claim to have occasionally paid boys to procure other boys for him. Fish tortured, mutilated, and murdered young children with his implements of hell, a meat cleaver, a butcher knife, and a small handsaw. On July 11, 1924, Fish found eight-year-old Patrice Kale playing alone on her parents' farm at Staten Island, New York. He offered her money to come and help him look for rhubarb. She was about to leave the farm when her mother chased Fish away. Fish left but returned later to the Kells farm where he tried to sleep but was discovered by the father and forced to leave. During 1924, the 15-year-old Fish, suffering from psychosis, felt that God was commanding him to torture and sexually mutilate children. Shortly after the abduction of Grace Bud, Fish attempted to test his implements of hell on a 10-year-old child he had been molesting named Cyril Quinn. Quinn and his friend were playing box ball on a sidewalk when Fish asked them if they had eaten lunch. When they said they had not, he invited them to his apartment for some sandwiches. While the two boys were wrestling on Fish's bed, they dislodged his mattress. Underneath was a knife, a small handsaw, and a meat cleaver. They became frightened and ran out of the apartment. Despite already being married, Fish married Estella Wilcox on February 6, 1930 in Waterloo, New York. They divorced only after one week. Fish was arrested in May 1930 for sending obscene letters to a woman who answered an advertisement for a maid. Following that arrest and another 1931, he was sent to Bellevue Hospital for observation. Back in 1928, on the 25th of May, Fish saw a classified advertisement in the Sunday edition of the New York World that read, Young Man 18 Wishes Position in Country. 
On May 28th, Mr. Fish, he was then 15 years old. He visited Bud family home in Manhattan under the pretense of hiring Edward. He later confessed that he planned to tie Edward up, mutilate him, and leave him to bleed to death. Fish introduced himself as Frank Howard, a farmer from Farmingdale, New York. He promised to hire Bud and his friend and said that he would send them for, for a few days. Fish failed to show up, but he sent a telegram to Bud family apologizing and set a later date. When Mr. Fish returned, he met Edward's younger sister, a 10-year-old Grace Gracie Bud. He apparently shifted his intentions toward Grace and quickly made up a story by having to attend his niece's birthday party. Mr. Fish persuaded the parents and let Grace accompany him to the party that evening. Fish subsequently took Grace to an abandoned house he had previously picked out to use for the murder of his next victim. There, Fish manually strangled her to death, then decapitated and dismembered her body and ate most of the remains over the next several days. The police arrested 66-year-old Superintendent Charles Edward Pope on September 5th, 1930, as a suspect in Gracie's disappearance. Charles Edward Pope was accused by Pope's estranged wife. Pope spent 108 days in jail just between his arrest and trial on December 22, 1930. He was found not guilty. November 1934, an anonymous letter sent to Gracie's parents ultimately led the police to fish. Bud's mother was illiterate and could not read the letter herself, so she had her son read it to her. The letter that Mr. Fish wrote and Mrs. Bud's mom had her son read to her. The letter was all about cannibalism, molestation of children, which everything inside the letter talked about human bodies being tasty over pork chops cooked baked in this letter stated everything that can be done to a young child or a young boy or just a person of any kind this letter is what made the police investigate more with Mr. Fish. Now the police investigated the letter and all those story concerning the Captain Davis in the Hong Kong could not be verified. The part of the letter concerning the murder of Grace, however, was found to be accurate in his description of the kidnapping and subsequent events. Although it was impossible to confirm whether or not Fish had actually eaten parts of Grace's body. Now, the letter was delivered in an envelope that had a small hexagonal emblem with the letters NYPCBA representing the New York Private Chauffeurs Bonneville Association. A janitor at the company told the police he had taken some of the stationery home but left it at his room house that he had on 52nd Street when he moved out. The landlady of the room that Mr. Fish had said that Fish's son sent him some money. And if he did get some money, could he come back and pick it up? Detective William King, the chief investigator for the case, stated that I'll wait outside the room until he returns. Once Mr. Fish returned, he agreed to go to headquarters for questioning. Then he brandished a razor blade. Mr. King disarmed Mr. Fish and took him to police headquarters. Fish made no attempt to deny the murder of Grace Bud, saying that he meant to go to the house to kill her brother. 
It never even entered his head to rape the girl. But he later claimed to the attorney that while kneeling on Grace's chest and strangling her, that I did have two involuntary ejaculations. This information was used at a trial to make the claim the kidnapping was sexually motivated, thus avoiding any mention of cannibalism. During Mr. Fish's arrest, more crimes were discovered from the past. Francis McDonald and a Billy Gaffney. Francis McDonald's body was hanging from a tree. One of his legs, the flesh, was ate from his thigh. He was, of course, strangled with his own suspenders. And Francis McDonald was only nine years old. During the trial of the case, none of the jurors doubted that Fish was insane. But ultimately, as one later explained, they felt he should be executed anyways. They found him to be the sane and guilty and the judge sentenced the defendant to death by electrocution. Fish arrived at prison in March 1935 and was executed on January 16, 1936 in the electric chair at Sing Sing. Mr. Fish entered the chamber at 11.06 p.m. and was pronounced dead three minutes later. He was buried in the Sing Sing Prison Cemetery. Fish is said to have helped the executioner position the electrodes on his body. His last words were reportedly, I don't even know why I'm here. According to one witness present, it took two jolts before Fish was dead, creating the rumor that the apparatus was short-circuited by the needles that Fish inserted into his body. These rumors were later regarded as untrue, as Fish reportedly died in the same fashion and time frame as the others has died in the electric chair. At a meeting with reporters after the execution, Fish's lawyer, James Dempsey, revealed that he was in possession of Mr. Fish's final statement, amounted to several pages of handwritten notes that Fish apparently penned in hours just before his death. When he was being pressed about the notes to reveal the document's contents, Dempsey refused, stating, I would never show it to anyone. It was the most filthy string of obscenities that I've ever read in my life. Between the years of 1924 and 1928, Mr. Fish is believed to have killed at least three children. Francis McDonald, eight years old, Billy Gaffney, four years old, and Grace Budd, 10 years old. Mr. Fish claimed to have sexually assaulted at least 100 boys, the most of whom were African American and had developmental disabilities. He claimed he picked them because he believed that police would not fully investigate attacks against them. Additionally, he asserted that he had murdered a child in each of 23 states in which he had lived in. I hope you enjoy this unfortunate story for all the people that Mr. Fish has murdered and killed. A lot more coming from Tombstone Whispers. I'm Mr. Wade and Mrs. Crime. We always bring it to you. Till then.